Hello and welcome. It's time for a kit review. Sit back and relax. Today's episode focuses around the Toyota MR2 AW11 or the first generation MR2. And specifically, this episode will focus on the Hasegawa versions of this kit. Yes, I said versions, for this will cover two kits. One that covers the early version from 84 to 85, and then the 86 through 88 versions, or the late versions. We start with the glass panel, which is mostly identical between kits. You will see a difference between the, the next one, which we will cover. The body is exactly identical between kits. And this is molded in dark green so that you can recreate the two-toning or the Sherwood toning that is uh, on the box art, which is a really interesting one. I actually ran into a uh, Sherwood toning MR2 A1, AW11 uh, about three months ago on, on a trip. This kit was first released in June of 2022, so this is a fairly new kit. The roof is molded into two different pieces. I believe that's for the options that you get in the between these two kits. You have a, a standard roof, which is common on both kits. And then the early version has the sunroof variant, and then the later version has a T-top variant. Although all five years, 84 to 88, offered hardtop, sunroof, or T-top. Both kits feature about 80% shared parts, the differing parts being reserved to different sprues, which is a good way to hide variations and, um, and to keep the cost down on the molding process. The seats come in one piece sprues for each set. You've got the front and back moldings, which are high quality, and they are shared for all five years. Both variants will have the same seats. The instructions do call out for a two-tone interior colors, as you will see on some reference photos that we will get to. This one shows a, a yellow and black interior, which is uh, unique to the Sherwood toning color scheme. It also has the uh, three-spoke wheels for the 84 to 88 variants. The later ones with the supercharged actually have a different rim but all AW11s um, in the first three years came with the triangle-shaped rims. It's, uh, it's very unique to the uh, MR2. This sprue featuring the interior tub, chassis, spoiler, hood is shared between both kits. You also have the surround for the rear window, the rear bumper. Some of the first variations are the engine cover. This is the standard engine cover for non-supercharged versions and your hardtop option. They are shared between both kits. This sprue is unique to the early model years, the front bumper and the sunroof option, as well as the mirrors. The mirrors were different between the supercharged and the uh, base model. Here's another example of a uh, sprue that's unique to this version. It has the uh, interior door cards and the transmission tunnel cover, which are unique to this specific car. It also has the uh, intake plenum and steering wheel. There is a different one in the next kit. This is a shared item. As you can see, the dashboard, the uh, instrument hood, the interior bits are unchanged. And another shared component is the uh, engine parts the underside, the transmission cover, and the suspension bits. Many Japanese manufacturers, Hasegawa, Fujimi, Tamaya, will have a brief description of the subject on the beginning of the instruction sheet, along with a picture of the assembled kit, a high quality kit. Um, the inside will have a map of the pieces, the sprues, as well as shaded areas, which are optional parts. While doing research for the AW11 chassis, I found that this shaded anti-sway bar 
was something that Toyota added to later models, 86 and above, as well as these mud flaps for the rear. So these are pieces that will be on the next kit, but not on this one. The rest of your instruction is your standard fare. You have your last page that shows the painting of the body. This one being the Sherwood toning, which is a very dark green on the upper side, and then a lower piece of gold, which is a very striking color. You have your yellow and black seats called out in painting on this one. There's not a lot of research pictures for the Sherwood toning interior, but what I found had the upper parts is yellow, but the lower part is a little different than what's called out in the instruction. This really highlights how important proper research can be. You can misremember a certain detail or be completely off. So finding good reference picks, studying them, finding out if there's a uh, slight variation here or a big variation over here will really turn your subject into that much of a better end product. After years of doing models, I've even found that uh, following the instructions can be inaccurate when looking at other reference picks. The decal sheets, although sharing some similar markings, are unique to each version. Depending on which color you paint your car, you have different pen stripe markings. Even the radios on the interior are different and on the different sprues. So my final thoughts on this kit are pretty straightforward. This is a brand new kit. It has high quality parts. It's from a high quality manufacturer, Hasegawa, which means that you're gonna have a very easy time to put pieces together. If you do your proper research, you're gonna have the uh, correct colors for the interior, the exterior, the engine pieces. And in the end, you're gonna have a high quality model to put on your shelf. The cons on this kit um, are few. They might not matter to you, but in order to re recreate the 1984 version that I first saw when I was a kid in the uh, tealish blue, I had to get both year kits, the early and late versions, so that I could have the T-top variant, which is important to me. The other con being is that a lot of Japanese manufacturers do not offer a left-hand drive instrument dash. So unless you have access to a 3D printer, uh, you could be stuck making a right-hand drive version only. While doing research for this chassis, I found that this Sherwood toning body style is uh, fairly rare. So it was really interesting when I saw this uh, in person a couple months back. It uh, really stands out, the dark green and the gold. All of the uh, early models have the ubiquitous three-spoke rims. The side intake is different. Here is a picture of the Sherwood turning where the green looks more like black compared with the blue MR2. You have your gold. That also shows the interior can be a little bit different. You have different stripes on the hood. A lot of variations, uh, especially on the first three years. But um, that's the importance of doing your research. I found this simple variant chart online and wanted to use it as the uh, breakup between the earlier and late model years. You can see the bottom one has the different air intake on the side, as well as the supercharger rims. So now we're going to talk about the 86 through 88 version and its unique pieces as well. This last car actually has incorrect rims. Those are for an 87 to 89 Corolla FX16 GTS. The Hasegawa MR2 AW11 late version. G-Limited Supercharger with the T-Bar roof. 
this is the unicorn for a lot of AW11 purists. This first brew has the some of the differences I was talking about. The early version engine cover as well as the supercharger engine cover and the supercharger components and of course your standard base roof. This next sprue is unique to the later version. It has your T-bar roof rear, your supercharger side intake as well as your front bumper and your mirrors. They are unique for, for the supercharger variant. This piece has your differences in the interior parts. You, the door cards are different for the, between the earlier and later years. The uh, supercharger components for the engine, the transmission tunnel cover, your steering wheel, and the radio. Even the radio is different on the later models. I keep saying the transmission tunnel. It is not a transmission tunnel. The transmission is transversely mounted along with the engine uh, behind you but the uh, structural integrity um, is uh, what's called a backbone chassis. So you still have that transmission tunnel piece in between the seats. Here are the different decals. You can see these uh, supercharger markings, the different pen striping options for your different colored cars, your T-bar glass panel, which is your difference on your glass as well as the rear marker lights are a little different between uh, the the model years from 86 on they have this slimmer look the included body is exactly the same as the earlier version the only difference being is that it's molded in white as well as the other pieces for the body the interior being molded in dark gray The chromed headlight and taillight buckets are the same between the kits. The rims are different. This one has the supercharged rims that have a teardrop shape cut out. If you are building a standard version of the later years, the non-supercharged versions, you are going to need the three-spoke rims from the earlier version or an aftermarket set so that you can replicate whatever version you're looking for. Your seats carry over between both kits because there is absolutely no variation or option for a, a different style of seats. The only variation between the seats are the color patterns that they come in and they would be determined by your exterior color. Red with red, blue with blue. There were solid colored seats as well. So you could have a beige interior, black interior, gray interior. It's, it's all determined by what your exterior color is. The new instructions include your sprue maps and it also shows that there are different highlights for different options whereas some were unused pieces in the first one like the sway bar and the rear mud mud guards you have those as pieces that you will be using on this one since they were used after 86. Here on the last page, it has a picture of the non-supercharged engine cover and standard roof. One fun feature of these kits is to display the headlights either open or down after assembly. That way you can feature it in a diorama or display it on its own in either of its 80s glory pop-up headlights. So my final thoughts on this kit are exactly the same as the other one. They both have the same pros and cons the left-hand drive, etc. So that's the review. Thank you for watching. Wait a minute. My Google search also came up with these modified AW11 MR2s that I wanted to leave you with. So here's some bonus material. Thank you for watching and have a great day.